Fry's Restaurant, 1302 Main Highway in Bamberg, now presents the Coach's Corner Show. Trent Kynard and Anthony Every Harley, week. along with Every head week. football coach of the Bamberg Gerhard Red Raiders, Butch Carl. Crosby. We take you now to Fry's Restaurant for this live broadcast of the Coach's Corner Show. And good afternoon, sports fans. We're live here from Fry's Drive-In for the Coach's Corner with head coach Butch Crosby. Coach, how are you doing today? Uh, doing good. How about yourself? Fine. Let's give a uh, announcement here. The Red Raiders are here, or excuse me, the Coach's Corner is here every Friday night on WBSC Radio, brought to you in part by Tony Bledsoe and the employees who serve you at Fry's Drive-In Restaurant in Bamberg. There's something new at Fry's. They're now open on Monday and Thursday nights from 5 until 7 for a pickup dinner. More information is available at 245-4540 from 11 to 2 daily or 707-3198 anytime. That's Fry's Drive-In Restaurant under the Red Roof, Highway 301 North in Bamberg. All right, Coach, great win um, against longtime rival Barnwell this uh, past Friday night. Let's hear your thoughts. Uh, I thought it went well. I thought we came out of the box a little slow there in the first half. Uh, when they made a couple of corrections there in the second half, and I thought in the second half we came out and played well. Uh, we just got to get going early. For some reason, we come out a little sluggish, a little slow. Uh, I think that was just because it was just the first home game. Uh, you know, we had a lot going on, first pet rally of the year, uh, trying to get the kids to kind of uh, wound back down from that pet rally early that day, and I think they were just so excited. So they were just was missing a few things here and there we were trying to do offensively. Uh, I thought we picked it up in the second half once we realized that, you know, there are some things that we had there that we should have uh, took advantage of in the first half. Yeah, Coach, what I said prior to the game, uh, Anthony and I were speaking. I said, you know, Anthony, I said, rival games, anything can happen. Yeah. And uh, a team could come in at 0-9, 1-10, whatever it may be. And when it's a rival game, you see it at Carolina and Clemson here in the state of South Carolina. When that game comes about, it's time to play because uh, you don't know what you're going to get. And I think I was saying that I thought we might be a little flat coming off a of bye week. And we looked at it in the first half. We'll mm -hmm. talk about it later. But, um, yeah. but I think I almost hit the nail on the head. It was uh, – we uh, started slow, but finally turned it on, and I said we'd do that, and I think I was right. Again, um, I have to ask, what do you contribute to the slow starts that we are having and we're, um, being unable to score in the first quarter? I don't think this season we've scored in the first quarter yet. We haven't. Uh, I don't know if it's just not being focused coming out. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I try not to stress it because <coughs> when you start stressing things, and they, they become an issue. Right now, I just think we – Still trying to find ourselves. There are a few things that you know we, we're trying to work on. Uh, really, in the first quarter, what we try to do is formation, just to find out exactly how you're going to line up the formation once you realize what you're going to line up to. Uh, then we try to take advantage of it, and I think we do a great job of that. Yeah, it would be great to come out and score, <laughs> score in that first uh, first quarter. Maybe on the first drive would be great. Uh, but right, we, we're just still trying to fit, feel teams out. Uh, we did a great job of that last week. Once we realized. How do we play in certain situations, certain formations? Uh, we line up in that formation. We pick the pace up. That gives us a chance to pick the pace up. Uh, that's when we hurry you up a little bit. We get on oh, I tell you what, boy. I, <laughs> I, I, I tell the fans at home, they say, Trent, you got to slow down talking. I said, folks, you don't understand. This play after play after play, we had an 80-yard, I'll talk about it later, an 80-yard run, got down to the 11, or a 75-yard run down to 11, and we had a play going in less than 15 seconds. I said, that's pretty impressive. Oh, uh, yeah. We try to get it going quick. Um, <clears throat> We, we feel like we can get going and get into a rhythm. Uh, it gives us an advantage. Uh, it keeps your personnel on the field defensively. Uh, they got to be a little tired. Uh, we don't have a lot of our up front guys going both ways. Uh, and I think that's one of the keys to it is our up front guys, uh, they get a chance to come in and say, Coach, man, pick the pace up. You know, in the first quarter, we're just trying to figure you out. And they, they can't stand it. And I think we got to do a better job just getting in one formation and say, guys, we're going to stay here. Uh, and we're just going <coughs> to run what we run. Uh, but we're trying to figure you out because later down the line, we need to know how you're going to line up in certain situations. And I think that contributes to that slow start. Yep. It was either in the uh, second or third drive, not exactly sure. You have the uh, ball at the War Horses 25-yard line, fourth and 11. Mm -hmm. Quarterback Hunter after keeps it, gets down to the eight-yard line with 19.8 seconds, I believe, in the first quarter. How big was that for your offense? Oh, it was big. I think uh, on that drive, if I'm mistaken, Trent, if we can go back and and think about it, I think they may have an offsides penalty there. Uh, you know, I want to contribute that to the offensive uh, line, the offense period. Uh, they changed the snap count on their own. Uh, you know, I didn't know they were changing the snap count. 
There were a couple, there were one time I went out and they said, Coach, we're going on three. I was like, three? We we can't get off on one. And <laughs> now you're doing it on three? Come <laughs> and on. And now guys. they said, Coach, we've been doing it all night. I was like, hey, if you've been doing it all night, don't let me mess you up. Uh, so we, we, we changed the snap count up some. Uh, that fourth down play was big for us. It was huge. Uh, like I said, Hunter's been, he's been reading it well. Uh, he sets things up and he came off and he said, Coach, I, I can get to the edge. I said, just as long as you get enough for the first down. And we did that, and that just kept the drive going. I think we had a 16-play drive on the second drive of the game. Yeah, Coach, it's funny you said that, and I think later I got a question about it, and we'll skip it when we get there. But since you mentioned it, I think it was nine times the Barnwell defensive front jumped off sides. And I said during the game, now I coached for years as well, no, and I said, guys, I was telling Anthony and, and people listening at home, you got a guard. Looking at the football, that's his key. All right. And he still jumped off. He, yeah. I, I mean, he, I, he had got five on his own, I know. And I said, good day, I'd have had to find somebody yeah, new. I, but it's I frustrating. got coaches that say that. They, they be wanting to go on. <laughs> they be like, go on a long snap count. I said, we're in the gun. Where are they going? Yeah. And lo and behold, they jump they off go. sides. I'm like, wow. Hey, I don't know what they're looking at. I know. <laughs> what else could you be what looking at? What else you looking at? Well, we finally get on the scoreboard to start the second quarter. Um, when uh, It was Ken. I think he got in the end zone. PAT was good. Were you surprised again that it took the offense so long to get in the end zone? I know you say that, you know, and we've covered it a little bit about right. how long it takes and all, but it, it, it's not really an issue when you win, obviously. Right. And it's not an issue when you play teams that may not be as good as you. Right. But what scares me as a old coach, an old friend, I mean, you know what I'm saying, as you get deeper into the season. Oh, yeah. As you know, and you start playing good teams, and then you start thinking, you know, in the back of your mind as a coach, you start playing it, and you're saying, well, all right, we go down 14 to nothing in the first exactly. quarter, second quarter. We got to start scrapping and fighting to get back in that second half. Then it becomes an issue. Most definitely. Uh, you know, we try to defer. We always try to get our defense on the field first. Uh, they do a great job of getting us the ball back. Uh, like I said, we, we got to get better no matter what formation we come out in. Uh, we got to try to put the ball in the first quarter. We don't want to put ourselves in a hole. Uh, but I want that to get better as the season goes. Uh, I want I want them to see the improvement as we go along. Uh, right now it seems a little frustrating, but it also gives teams uh, a lot of formations look at in the first quarter that uh, I have to prepare for. It does. Uh, not knowing exactly what we're going to come out in. And late in the season is when it counts. Right now it, it's still early in the pre-season, season. Preseason, right? Yeah, it's still preseason. Five, five games uh, you, preseason. You think about, then, like you say, region and come playoffs. Uh, and they're sitting there saying, you know, in the first quarter, they've been in 20 different formations. Which formation are they going to come out in? Uh, and that's when I think it's going to work best for us as we get into the season right now. It's still, we still come out in a lot of different formations that start the game. If you notice, we're, we came out against that. It's doing five wide. Yeah. <laughs> we I said, wow. We I, yeah, I said that. We come out in five wide. Uh, last week, I think we came out in one back with maybe one tight end. Uh, I think one time we came out with no tight ends and went spread. Uh, so we come out in a lot of different formations and early in the year. Uh, you're going to get that. You're going to get where you don't get those scores early. Uh, but we, we'll get better with that as, as, as the season goes on. One thing Anthony and I discussed on Friday night, your special teams, they didn't give up a long touchdown run. Right. But I thought they gave up more yards than you would have oh, been happy right. with. And, and you probably talked about it this week. Am I correct? Oh, you know, all right. We talked about that a lot this week. Uh, kickoff is one of the things we've been stressing. And I think the guys that's on there – uh, we, we did a great job this week of sitting down watching film and stressing to them uh, about running lanes and making tackles. We just had a couple of guys that's never really played kickoff for us. All of a sudden, they're starting for us on kickoff. And they're so anxious to go down and make plays, and, and they're just getting out of the scheme of things, uh, running your lane, dodging butt side, and not not running into a, 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 a blocker, you know, get a, dodge them and get back in your lanes. Those are things that we worked on this week, and we took a, we took two or three periods and just worked that. Uh, we did that in film work, and, and I think that's going to come out to help us a little bit. We'll see a little difference in that uh, come Friday night. Yeah, your defense pretty stout all night long. Uh, you seldom gave up any rushing yards to speak of. However, the War Horses were able to move the ball through the air. Oh, yeah, they, they threw the ball. We, it's, it's, tough. it's tough for us in practice to run on our defense, uh, whether it's the first-team defense or – Second team, or what? It's it's tough for us to run the ball. So I know it's tough on other teams, and they're gonna relay. They're gonna rely on the pass. Uh, look for an air attack come Friday night against Woodland. Uh They're gonna sling this ball all over the field. I, I, if I'm looking at film, I'm saying, Coach, the only success we got is to throw the football. And um, I, I think that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna come out and try to dink and dunk it here and there. Try to get quick passes off, get deep, throw the ball to the receiver, and let them get out there and be playmakers. Um, 
So it may be, it's going to be a task for our DBs uh, to come in and be able to stop that. And we may have to jump and play a little press coverage just to throw the timing off. Uh, things like that we're going to have to do because I know they're going to throw the football because it's tough to run against us. Yeah, and I was thinking, and I'm just going down a list of things that came to me when I was watching it to start. We'd like to start the game. Uh, you punted twice in the first half, maybe the first quarter. Right. Memory serves me correct. I, I, I can't remember you punting that much in a long time. Um, what do you contribute that to, just being able to unable to get things going and yeah, a flow? Just like I said, it goes back to trying to find find what works for you, trying to find a formation that's your best formation that – come late in the ball game that you know if we need a first down we know that they're going to line up like this and, and and we can get a first down no matter what we know where they're going to be at and that's one of the keys is you got to find out where they are early don't wait till late in the game so i need to go to this formation and then you realize man we can't run that so we try to get all the formations we can get in early uh we try to get as many plays as we can get in to wear you down i think uh, last week we ran 73 offensive plays yeah I uh, saw so a high school program playing 48 minutes. Uh, you know, I think we do a heck of a job. We might start out slow, but we doggone show pick it oh, up. We, and, and we will talk going. about it. I guarantee you we get it going, and that's what that's what counts in the end. Um, you know, it's radio guys and, and TV guys, any kind of – you've got to ask a bunch of questions, oh, coaches, you know, right, and, and, right. and that's it. And fans want to know. Oh, I mean, I don't want them to they want the that. overall product, you know, but that's then they, right. I'm sure sitting in the stands sometimes they go, what in the world's going on with us? I, we, you know, and I can hear them talking. That's so. right. Uh, just um, know that we're just trying to, we're trying to find what formations work best for our kids. So late in the ball game, uh, uh, crunch, when, it, when it's crunch time, uh, we know there's a formation we can put our guys in and they're going to be successful. Yep. Getting back to it, it amazes me how every week, it doesn't matter who we got as a running back, but they carry the Red Raiders. I mean, you know, this week it was Keyshawn Orr had 100 and uh, – I think it was. Let me make sure I'm right. I was about to say 172, but I want to say it's the or 118. Had 118 yards on 13 carries. Oh, that's a pretty All right. good night. That's, that's a good night. But, yet, you know, you still had Dunbar, I think it was. He had uh, 21 attempts and 76 yards. But every week it's a different running back. Uh, how has Bamberg built such a stable of running backs over the years? <laughs> I don't know. But we're just blessed to have them come through here. Uh, we, we, I don't, I don't know the answer to that one. I mean, I'm just telling you, it's amazing. I mean, I don't know if it starts in rec ball or what it does. Well, but, but it does start when they're young. You know, certain things you can't teach kids. I think, you know, I think what contributes to it is the fact that uh, each one of those guys uh, trust each other. That you know, we we keep them fresh as long as we can. You know, if you go and look at it, I guarantee we rotate backs about every three plays, uh, which keeps them fresh. You know, if you can rotate backs. And you find one that's going to be fresh, and he can hit one for about 40, 50 yards. And when you look up, you're like, why are they taking him out? Well, I want to keep him fresh for down the road. Uh, so we've been doing a good job of rotating. They've been going, doing a good job of rotating among themselves, knowing that we don't want to wear you out. We want you in there for the long haul uh, so we can all be fresh at the end of the game. Yeah, because what's impressive is, you know, it doesn't seem like any of them hold a grudge. If, if Keyshawn scores, it looks like they're all jumping up and down for right, him. Right. Dunbar scores, Can scores, no matter who it is. It's, you don't see a lot of animosity. You see a lot of excitement, a lot of excitement. with one goal in mind, and that's obviously getting their state championship, and that's pretty impressive for young men. Uh, today's uh, sponsors for us, Coach, is uh, Vaughn Electronics, Steve Chandler, Channel Law Firm, Chris Jennings at Little Howie's Big Chick, the Advertiser Herald Newspaper, Tony Bledsoe, um, at Fry's Drive-In Restaurant right here where we're at today. Uh, Rick Pinson at Pinson's Insurance Agency. Dr. McElhaney, the Bamberg Family Practice. The Bamberg Board of Public Works. Richard Kemp at Farm Bureau. Keep Bamberg County Beautiful. Uh, Tagadoo's Unique Gifts. Wilson and Luganville Law Firm. Eddie Sanders at the new Hires Drug Store. Ness and Jet, LLC. Bo Griffith, Home Federal Savings and Loan. Nancy Foster with Foster and Company. Sweets, Tires, and a Complete Auto Repair. Southern Carolina Alliance and South State Bank. Quarterback Hunter Etheridge gets on the board again for us in the uh, second half, I guess. I mean, the first half, but the second quarter. Right. I mean, later on, we get a 14 nothing lead. Um, I'm never going to let you live it down. But for three games, Etheridge, whose legs we didn't know. I know you were, you were trying to be a Vince Dooley on me, but for, <laughs> for three games, Etheridge has a touchdown. I've given him a new nickname, and that's Legs, because I tell you, his legs go everywhere when he's running. This as funny as can be. Uh, what do you think? After the uh, Etheridge touchdown, the War Horses go on the war path. Uh, let me make sure I'm right with the ball getting thrown all over the place. Red Raiders defense, they're going here and there. They get a 60-yard touchdown yeah. path, uh, pass. 
that gives the war horses their first points of the night. Right. I commented on air. It looked as though we were just going through the motions at that point. Yeah, you know, a lot of times you get into a situation, you jump up by two touchdowns with somebody, uh, you kind of get relaxed and saying, you know, this is it, they're going to fold. Mm -hmm. uh, and our guys had to have an eye opener, and that, that 60 <coughs> yard, 61 yard pass was an eye opener. For the simple fact, Bone wasn't going to lay down. Uh, that, that Coach Garrett's not going to let his kids no. do that. And uh, I think we got kind of lackadaisical there saying, oh, they can't do this, they can't do that. And then all of a sudden, boom, they hit one, you're like, uh oh. I got to wake back up, and I think that's what happened to us. Uh, there on that long pass, we, we came up, took a bad angle. Uh, corner took a bad angle. Safety took a bad angle, and we just flat out missed tackles. I, I just think it was just that was just a bad play for us right there. I thought it was real nice of uh, Coach Corey Cross, but he came off the field. He had cookies and milk for him, and he was so excited. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Coach was, I think Coach was a little upset on that pass play, and I could see it in him. And, and you know, Kids going to be kids. He and I, he was up here last week, obviously. And, and like you said, he understands, you know, he's going to make mistakes. But I like how y'all handle it. I saw Corey at that time. He wasn't mad. I mean, he was kind of – it was more of a teaching moment right. for later in the season. That's and right. that's what we got to have. I mean, as coaches, as, as you well know, and that's what we got, and it was pretty awesome. Um, again, let's see. Uh, your offense gets another touchdown later on in the half. On a, uh, Let's see. Um, Jamari Dunbar gets on the board. Mm -hmm. All right. Barnwell looks as they're going to – uh, let's see, make sure we kick off with 19 point seconds. Uh, Barman gets down the field rather quickly, I thought. Uh, yeah, they did. They got down the field because we busted ourselves again on kickoff. Uh, you know, we, we go down there, we don't run our lane, we don't make tackles. Uh, you know, just taking, that's not a time to take a playoff. You no. know, we, we, we stress special teams. That's a third of the ball game. Though. If you're going to get beat, it won't be on offense or defense. Nine times out of ten, it's on special, special teams. teams. exactly. And kickoff can get your butt beat quick. And um, I think we've corrected that. We've changed some spots. We've got some guys that's willing to go down there and do that. And, um, we're we're going to let them play this week. All right. We just lost it for one second. We'll call them right back. Folks, bear with us on the uh, Internet. It's going to happen from time to time. There's a metal roof in this building, and the connection sometimes can be weak. We should answer here in just a moment. So we didn't miss nothing there, Coach, but we're going right back. If we can connect. That's a tough thing about being in an older building with older wiring. And make sure you're still listening and decide not to go outside. If you did, you'll have to do, you'll have to do it. Is it dead air down things right now? Okay. Come on with me, buddy. If he went outside, folks, this is where we're going to be. We're going to have to just go ahead and do it live on the uh, on the for YouTube in just a moment. All right, let's do this. Hold one second, folks. We're going to have to call him on the other. And we can always um, splice this on YouTube, so not a problem at all. Nobody will see it but the folks sitting here. Kind of frustrating. Sorry about that, Coach. Yeah, you can. Technology, boy. That's right. Technology. That. Back in the old days, we could have plugged up a phone line. We'd have been talking the whole time That's through right. and been good. But now it's, things have changed. <laughs> All right. We're we dropped out, Kent. Trent. Trent. All right. Put us back on. We good. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry about that, folks. A little bit of uh, drop out there. I think we good. think that we um, had a little problem, but I think we're back on now. Here we go. All right. We were talking about Coach Park. Sorry about that. Again, they were driving down. Mm -hmm. Barnwell took the ball, and they were about to attempt a 42-yard field goal. You call a timeout, right. if you recall. All right, you come on out, talk to you guys and everything. We go back out. Flag comes from way back toward the goal post. Mm -hmm. I said, how in the world? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 men on the field. <clears throat> what were you thinking right there, and were you frustrated? Uh, just, I, I was frustrated for some fact we're just coming out of a timeout. That's it, yeah. Uh, we just got to get better with personnel. And like I told them, I said, guys, same thing happened in the state championship game. If we can't count down on 11 players after a timeout, then something, something's got to give. And I was, I'm, I'm a little frustrated on that myself, uh, making sure we talk special teams all the time. Uh, you know, as far as making sure we got the personnel on. Uh, but I think we actually went uh, field goal block, and, and uh, one of the guys actually thought we were still on defense. But that's still that's that's coaching. That's uh, that's uh, that's on all of us as a coach. And being and focused too, though. I mean, yeah. you got the kids got to take a little responsibility Thank and you. be focused. And because I, I I'm gonna go back early, and I hate to call a kid out, but I know he won't mind. And his daddy probably got on him worse than knowing him. 
uh, Blaze one time. It was a punting situation. Yeah, he wasn't on the field. He was back. You yeah. know, he didn't realize we were punting the ball. Uh, you know, in true, they got to stay focused, and we do that in practice. We try to tell them when we're going through special teams. Uh, you got to stay focused so you never know. When we, we do transition things on Thursday. That's what we do today. We go through situations. We're on offense. Uh, and then we'll turn around and um, we'll, we'll punt the ball or we might score and we'll go for an extra point. So they got to run on and off the field. So it's not like it's not getting practiced. Uh, they just got to focus a little more during the game. And a lot of times, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of times kids lose focus. You know, they see a lot going on and they stop thinking about exactly how we punting the ball. Oh, man, I'm the punter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I talked to Buzz. I, I'm sure he wasn't happy. After the penalty, Barnwell kicker comes in. He goes to attempt a 32-yard field goal, and it was good. Right. Um, I don't know about you, but, man, I was impressed with his leg. That kid could hit that thing from 52, 62 yards out. I mean, it went almost over the uh, – well, it went over the track and got way back in the bushes. That's a, that's a, that's a weapon they have over there with that young man, Poole. I think it's Tool. Tool. Tool, tool yep. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's got a strong leg, and um, I wish – we could find us one like that. Don't get me wrong, Hunter kicks. Uh, yeah. He ain't got to go. If he can play quarterback and they got to go back and worry about kicking the ball, and we had a kicker like that, uh, that would dang sure be a uh, plus for you. Uh, I, I, he's an excellent guy. You know, he's an excellent kicker. Uh, he does a great job for him. Well, you go into the half with a 21-10 lead. T- run down for the fans. I think, you know, a lot of times we wonder. I mean, I don't obviously. I've been there, but a lot of fans wonder. They see you all walk back there at halftime and go either inside the building or go where you go. Give us a typical halftime, like who's talking to this player, who's talking to the defense, who's talking to the offense. Are you saying the big old speech, you know, trying to wound them up and get them fired back up? Or give them, a, you know, a kind of a, no, let's say a going, synopsis we're going of the halftime. halftime. We, we're broken up in our offensive uh, staff, defensive staff. Uh, Rob, Robert, who's our offensive coordinator, we'll talk about what formations work best. He's up top. Uh, Corey, as a defensive coordinator, get rid of his defense coaches. Uh, they talk about things that they got to do better with uh, when they're in certain situations. This is what we need to be in. Uh, so we, we kind of break up in the uh, offensive and defensive staffs and just talk among ourselves. Uh, once we get done with that, and then we'll come back as a, as a coaching staff. Uh, and then we'll, you know, I just, I don't give a motivational speech. Uh, you know, playing football, I shouldn't have to motivate you to play. That's all in you. The only thing I want you to do now is go out and finish the football game. So you're uh, not we, giving them the old uh, coach, um, the, the win one for the gift or stuff? Uh, none, no, none no, no, okay. none of that at halftime. You know, my thing is let's make corrections. Let's make sure we're all on the same page when we go back out, what needs to happen offensively, what needs to happen defensively, what needs to happen on special teams. Let's make sure we got all that together. Uh, get, a, get, them in, get them in there as a unit. Talk to them as a defensive unit, offensive unit. Uh, special teams unit, well, let's correct what we didn't do right in the first half is what I want to see going on. So we don't have time to, to, to go back and give a motivational speech. we got to do some correcting. we got to get on the board when we're at home. We get a chance to do that. Even at halftime when we're on the road, uh, we do have a grease board, so something's got to be corrected. we got to show it to them. Uh, so don't spend a lot of time hooping, hollering, and yelling. Do a lot more teaching than anything. Yeah. And I think that's been our biggest plus is that we are – we didn't go back there and browbeat him that we was only up 21 to 10. Or if we were down 21 to 10, there's no need yelling at him. Let's make sure That's we right. get it corrected. Uh, right. And if we can get it corrected and they understand, they're going to be more comfortable with themselves. They're going to play better in the second half. And that's what we've been doing. We just go back there and give them tidbits that makes them uh, better at what they're already doing. And once they understand that, oh, you know what, all I got to do is this, then they go out and they execute it. And then we look like we're a whole different other team. Yeah, and, and it has looked like that. You you were telling that, and I was thinking about old stories. We, uh, coach William Spivey, he was an old coach that I coached with back in the day and in Jasper County, and Coach was talking one time, telling a couple of things. He said, you know, Trent, he's like, it, you shouldn't have to go in and holler at the kid and get him motivated and fired up. He said, he's playing the best game that's ever invented. Ah, that's and right. Coach Spivey played in the first Gator Bowl with the University of South Carolina back with the old helmets. He, he used to oh, love yeah. to say, take it off and wrap it up and put it in his back <laughs> pocket and go home. So – you know, he, he, but he just said how great of a game that was, and he, and it made me think. I don't know why I was thinking of this, but he used to tell this story. He's like, I don't know why you guys warm up so much. I said, what do you mean, Coach? He said, have you ever seen a bank white robber standing outside in front of the <laughs> bank stretching and going? I said, no, sir. He said, well, you let him steal some money out that bank, he'll be running, and you don't pull a hamstring. I That's said, right. well, maybe, maybe you didn't got, stretch a lick. Didn't yet. stretch a lick, so maybe he's got something there I don't know. The uh, <laughs> Like I say, the score is 21-10 at the half. Feeling good about itself. You know, obviously a big rivalry. I was thinking that maybe we would be a little more ahead. At the same breath, I was thinking 
it's tough. I mean, it, you know, it was hot out there Friday night, very humid. Right. Um, you've been the head coach here in eight years for, uh, at, excuse me, at Bamber Gerhardt for eight years. Right. How does this team compare to some others you've coached in the past at this point, being um, undefeated right now again? Mm, every team's different. Uh, every team has its own un uniqueness about them. Um, this team right here just seems like they're more family oriented. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're a starter or your second team or your third team. You know, they kind of handle and, and, and treat each other the same. You know, they, they're rooting on each other. It's no big I, no little you. Uh, you know, it's all about team. And I, and I think that's one of the biggest things. You know, I tell the coaches all the time, you know, I, I just feel that this group here uh, understands that it does, I, I, can't, I don't have to do it all by myself. Yeah. Now I got 60 other guys out here that I can depend on, no matter whether we look at them as being a number one player or a number three player. They, they can help us. And I think that's been the plus for us with this group. And like I said, there's, uh, we've had groups come through that, you know, had players that, you know, were so called uh, the, the star player. I'm the starter. And, you know, it's about me and, and not about the team. So, you know, we've had those situations. But this group's not like that, and hopefully we, they can continue with that through the season uh, and not let it come in effect, come down the road. Uh, now nah, I think I got to do this by myself. Uh, team got you here. Team will take you to the state championship. And as an observer sitting in the booth every Friday night, myself along with Anthony Harley, we uh, we talk about things on air, off air, wherever we might be. And uh, if this team looks like that. I mean, there's certain teams you can see that you got one star player, he scores. And the other kids ain't really too excited. They like, hey, glad you scored your 20th touchdown. But, but this year, like right. I said, you got the littlest kid on the team running there, high fiving him, and he's not looking at that kid like something's wrong with him. He's giving him a high five, hugging, and 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 we noticed that as well. So I, I mean, I think you own to something this year, and, and we need to keep this train rolling. That's right. Uh, the second half, uh, let's see. You guys get to receive the ball first. Mm -hmm. Hunter Etheridge again shows those legs. He, he gets what about 60 plus yard run down to the 11 yard line. Yeah, he, he's still getting ragged about that right now. I said, how do you let him catch oh, him? He, I told him he should have scored on that <laughs> one. I picked that. He should have scored, but he did yeah. a great job of, uh, I think it was off of a, um, maybe a zone play. It was a zone I think it lead. was, yeah. I think it was. He kept it and pulled out and came out of the left side. Uh, I think the defensive end crashed down onto the, uh, the zone from the back, and he just pulled it. And when he got out there, there was nobody there but him and green grass. Uh, excellent play, great run. Uh, like I said, just wish he would have put it on the end zone, but I think we're going to eventually get it in there on that drive. Yeah, we do. Three plays later, Orr punches it in. That's Keyshawn Orr punches it in right. uh, for his first touchdown of the game. You, um, What did you think about that at uh, that point? I thought, uh, the positive, you know, we talk about things you get out of the, the game. You didn't score in the first quarter, uh, but if you go back and look at it, we've been struggling scoring coming in out of halftime. Uh, I think this might have been the first drive we've had coming out of half that we it was, scored. It was the first, yeah. I think it was the first I one. I keep up so, with that. That's a positive for us, you know. We're, we're getting the little things done. It's going to take a little while, and it's still early in the year. But I was just pleased that we were able to put the ball in the end zone coming out of half. You know, I always stress to them, you know, you got to be able to put the ball in coming out of halftime. we got to punch one in. And we finally got that done. So, you know, hopefully that's that's something we can build upon. You know, every time we want to punch the ball in after halftime. Whenever we get it, punch it in after half. Yep. The Red Raiders, after that, we hold the ball with defense. I mean, the, excuse me, our defense holds the ball with offense. We get a punt. Right. And guess who it is? Three weeks, three games. Dunbar runs it back for a touchdown. Right. Yet again, another penalty on special teams when we score a touchdown. How frustrating is that? It's I mean, I hate to ask you every week, Coach, but it's happening every week. It, it is. It's frustrating. And when you go back and look at film, uh, the guy the guy that got it I called saw it. on him, they trip. I mean, feet. His hands were up. Hands Their were feet up. were together. I said it on the radio. Anthony agreed with me that night. I said, my goodness. I said he's two yards back from him to start with. Right. Then they get a little closer. It, both of their feet get hooked up. He's got his hands up. He saw it coming. He right. said, I'm not going to hit him. Right. And their and feet get wrapped up, and he calls a penalty. And, and I'm like, come on, on, folks, really. So, you know, that was one of those things. You know, I don't like I said, I'm not going to pull him back and not be aggressive because I want him to be aggressive because we want to score on special teams. We want to score on kickoff return. We want to score on punt return. Anytime we get a chance to put the ball in the end zone, I don't care if it's offense, defense, but we want to put the ball in the end zone. So, you know, I don't want to take that away from them. We're going to continue to do what we do with that. You know, hopefully, you know, as the season goes on, uh, you know, the referees will see that, you know, that wasn't even 
that's not nothing for me to throw the flag for. You know, they tripped. <laughs> it was innocent. He was going to score anyway, whether that guy even tripped up or not. He wasn't going to catch him. Exactly. Um, but it was we, tough. We just got to get. We got to get a little better, but not take away our aggressiveness. Also. No, you can't give that up. Uh, second possession, second half. Jamari Dunbar gets a touchdown. I think that's his second of the night. Score goes up to thirty-four to ten. Right. Uh, could you finally breathe a little better on the sideline? Did you think maybe we're there at that not, point? <clears throat> Excuse me. No, not not yet. Uh, still balling. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> I mean, they scored on a sixty-yard pass because we were lackadaisical. Uh, you know, you you sit back there and you get stopped a couple times by offense. They take one and sling it, get another sixty-yarder. Uh, it's only thirty-four seventeen, only bound by seventeen. Momentum, something funny. You know, you don't want to give them any momentum. I want one more to make sure. Uh, and defense very did a great job of getting it back to us, so we can get one more. Uh, but once we got that one, that next one that's coming up, uh, I, I felt a little more comfortable. Well, we're going to score, I think, four, maybe five more times. <laughs> Only two counted, but we scored five times, oh, I want to yeah, say. yeah, I forgot. I mean, this. we get, I mean, and, and I was frustrated on the radio and I'm, I mean, and the other night, and I'm going to say it again today. I do not feel like it is an official's job to try and keep the score down. His job is to call the penalty whether it happens or not. Now, we see the two that we did score on, and right. one – was a monster block, and I don't know who threw it. It was down the sideline. I didn't catch the number. You remember when he hit the kid from Barmore? Yeah. Because Anthony on the radio said, "Ooh, Kenneth, I can listen." Kenneth McMillan, maybe. <laughs> that was a. I, I mean, he, yeah. Well, if it was, he rocked that kid. I mean, it was unreal. And folks, don't forget, if you want to see a replay of that and the rest of the game, you can go to www.youtube.com, where you got a search bar up there. You see a magnifying glass. Type in WBSC Radio. Click on it. It'll pop up. I think my image will come up from the first game when I was doing the pregame. Um, pregame. The click on the WBSC logo right there, and it'll pop up the whole listing, and you can uh, click on at that point the ball game. So it's pretty exciting and for them to see. But if we score two more, you get one from the thing about uh, what is it, sixty plus yard touchdown reception by. Gary Swarting, I think that was after the first one. He got about a 15, 25-yard touchdown reception. Savalas can he threw the last two. I yeah, he got both of those last, last two. two. Now, Savalas can, that was a nice pass he threw. I told um, Anthony right before that, he and I were talking on air, and I said, Anthony, I'd love to see uh, Savalas' arm right here, and that was a rocket. Yeah, he did. He and that was a right, and he, and, he, and he fed it in between two defenders, yep. and, I mean, it was pretty impressive. So that gives you some kind of. I guess I would say excitement about, and we hope the Lord nothing happens to Hunter, but I'm just saying you have to look in, ahead and back and forth. I mean, it gives you some kind of confidence that if something were to happen to Hunter or if something was to happen to Savala, you still got two quarterbacks oh, yeah. there and a third even in uh, Gagem. Uh, we'll probably do a little better with um, uh, rotating this week. Um, you know, Savala was uh, kind of behind the eight ball in this practice uh, one day last week, so, you know, we're just trying to limit you know, that's just one of our opportunities. You know, if you miss practice, then, you know, it cuts down on your playing time. Uh, so we kind of held it back a teaching little bit. Teaching moment. Yeah, teaching moment. You yeah. know, it's all about doing what's right. You know, you know where you're supposed to be at type deal. Uh, so we held him out. But I think this week he's been to practice. He's looked good this week. Good. Uh, I really think we can go, you know, about every two series. We can switch over now and Savalas can come in. <coughs> uh, you know, every other series we can switch Savalas and Hunter. Uh, Hunter can actually go to receiver. Savalas can actually go to back. Uh, so we, we've been mixing it up a little bit. So we're going to see uh, how, how, how much can we use both of them at the same time, have them both on the, on the field at the same time. Uh, so we're going to try some of those things this week. All right, you're going to a victory of 47-10, to 10, Coach. Um, we noticed in the first half the Red Raiders unable to uh, control the line of scrimmage up front on offense. Did yeah. you notice that as well, looking back at the oh, film, yeah, we that we didn't get our arms extended like we should have? Yeah, we struggled a little bit up front uh, just because of uh, where they were at. Um, once once Coach Palmer got them over to the side and started talking to them, uh, what they were doing, what needs to happen, uh, I think we kind of corrected that. We are kind of sitting back on our, on our heels instead of just driving off the football. Uh, you know, once he got with them and said, look, we, we got to drive off the football. we got to mash them up front. Uh, you know, linemen are funny now. You know, our linemen don't like to do a lot of stuff. They want to just mash people. They mash don't want to do a lot of moving and techniques and, and, and stuff rolling. like that. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. get them in there and you say, look here, uh, what, what needs to happen? Coach, let's go forward. Let's go straight ahead. Let's run doggone wheels. Let's run inside zone so we can get them moving. And they like to wear people down. Then they'll say, okay, let's try to run some outside zone, a little option or something like that. But they want us, and maybe we got to start doing that a little earlier, getting them guys going. Uh, just running straight downhill, getting two, three yards in a cloud of dust. 
Uh, that, that's what they want to do, man. That's what they built for. So we may have to look at that. It might give us that first quarter score right there. Might do it. The uh, secondary, of course, we talked about it early, had some problems keeping up at times with the uh, former receivers. Right. Now, I thought in the second half they tightened up and did a great job. I mean, as you can look at the first half stats for Barnwell as they were moving the ball a lot in the second half, not able to get as many passing yards. Um, is it concerning not, like I say, going to five games are almost like preseason. Right. Then you get into uh, region games, which that's what counts. That's how you make the playoffs or not make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's how you go further to a state championship or not go to a state championship. Right. Um, again, you just coach that during the regular week, um, regular season's week, you know, getting up into it and say, guys, that's what we did. Let's just try to get it better. That's how, you, you know, you, you get yeah, better you and know, learn. Secondary so. coaches know what needs to happen. They, 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 they had a great practice this week. Um, uh, we moved some guys around. You know, a lot of times you gotta you got to move some guys just for the simple fact of, getting them back focused. You know, a lot of times we get lack of days called they ain't throwing the ball over here at me. They're not going to do this. They're not going to do that. Uh, so I think we did a great job of getting some guys some eye openers this week and saying, look here, uh, if you're not going to do it the way we want it done, then you have to play it from the sideline. Uh, so we, we opened some eyes this week, and okay. I think we have a better out. And like I said, they're willing to throw this ball by the yeah, they're going to throw it about 100 times this week. Oh, yeah, I tell you, you can see the spread coming, coming, yeah. Yeah, you can see it coming. They know they can't run against you. Yeah, they, they know that. And we'll talk about them later. The uh, – all right, I know Coach Cross will be sitting out there. Coach, the uh, Red Raiders finally got an INT this week. Oh, All right. yeah. It comes from unlikely candidate, <laughs> our linebacker, Jack McDonald. Yeah. Now, the first two, Jack dropped. Yeah, he dropped two. And I picked, him, no, I picked at him. Don't I picked at him. Trust me, I gave him to Dickens because that's my buddy. But he, uh, the first one, I said, Jack, oh, even on the radio, I think I teased. I said, Jack, I said, hit you in the wrong spot, right in the hands. Yeah. <laughs> but Jack's a heck of a player. But he, uh, he finally um, gets the interception there. How does that make you feel? You know, you, you, the kid's a great kid, obviously, but right. on defense, we haven't had that per se big interception yet. Right. He gets it late in the game. The crowd gets fired up. How does that make you feel as a coach right. at that it point? It made us feel good at that point, you know, because we've been trying. Those guys, have, they've been wanting interceptions. And, you know, we've been getting some fumbles here and there, but they want the interception. They want it in the air. But if you go back, a lot of teams, the way they're throwing it in there, they're throwing things so quick, it's tough to get an interception. It is. It's so it's gonna be tough this week. We just got to make solid. If they if they tackling, I could care less if they catch one or not. As long mm -hmm. as they tackle and put them in, keep them out the end zone. Keep them out the end zone and, and, and tackle. Interception stats don't mean too much to me, but um, they they did a great job. Jack did a great job. Like I said, he had two. He dropped. He but, dropped them. <laughs> you know, right we, in the hands. We always pick at him. We always tell him that's why you play defense, not offense. Cause, but they, they laugh and joke about it. I can never think about Jack without thinking about his grandparents. I love him to McDonald's. We were in here one day and they were going, they said, uh, we the McDonald's, but we don't have a farm. The old McDonald's, <laughs> oh, but we don't old McDonald's, but we don't have a farm. I said, okay, I remember y'all from that. Uh, three touchdowns, call back. We, we touched on it briefly a moment ago. Right. All right, after the penalties. Make me feel better or not. Were they legit brought back? Uh, we not? had one that was legit. We had a holding call by one of our offensive linemen. He grabbed the guy. Uh, he was doing a great job blocking him. And if he just let him go, you know, it would have been fine. But uh, outside of that, you know, a lot of this is just we're going to keep the game closed. We're not going to let it get out of control. Uh, and, you know, is it fair? No, no, not to the kids that's out there playing, busting their butts. They turn around and get a call, uh, get, a, get a call against them. They're like, Coach, I didn't even do anything. Uh, yeah. You know, we had one that got called for holding. He said, Coach, I didn't even block anybody. <laughs> it's uh, like I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, Trust me, you gonna fuss at me for yeah, doing nothing when you look at the film. Not doing anything. <laughs> uh, so you know, we just we just gotta keep fighting through it, and hopefully it gets better as we keep going. Uh, but you know, it's nothing. Uh, not bashing any official. Oh yeah, no, like and I wouldn't either. Uh, but I just know sometimes, you know, coaches. If I'm on the, uh, if I was on the other side and and things were looking rough, I say, hey, look here, keep this thing respectable now. So, you know, yeah, we all do that. And we all Some officials, and they'll come to you and they'll say, Cole, man, we're just trying to keep it close. You don't ever want to go out and embarrass another team. No, definitely. Uh, just by running up the score just because you can do that. Uh, and that's not what Bama is built on. We're not built like that. But in that same breath, what's kind of frustrating is the official can say that, but then he has to look. I mean, he's looked at the game first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, getting late in the first, fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. He's got to see you got young guys that never have opportunity to get in. And because we're trying to hold the score down, is it fair to little Timmy who's going to get to be able oh, to score no. a touchdown and he hasn't scored one in his life, and they call it back for a, a, a phantom penalty? Oh, see, that's what frustrates me, yeah. and that's why on the yeah, air right. I get aggravated because I love these kids. Oh, yeah, and I love them to death, too. And like I tell those guys in our eyes, you know, it was a score. 
Uh, you know, don't don't stress yourself. We don't beat them up about it. We oh, clean yeah. the slate on Monday. Uh, and, you know, actually it seemed like we had a lot of penalties. We only had five the whole game. Really? It seemed like I'm with you. I kept thinking, <laughs> man, what in the world, guys? Yeah, but had, I, I that's know. because three of them came on one drive. <laughs> and that's the old coach. Yeah, you know, that's one's that's too many, I always heard. Yeah, and three said. of them came on the same drive. But, you know, we, we don't we don't just brow beat them for them. We just tell them just get better. Uh, if you know you didn't do anything wrong, just accept it, move on, let's keep driving. We'll get them. As the season going, like I said, we'll get those guys that's going to say, look here, whatever comes about, comes about, just play the football game play ball. and move on. Play ball. All right, Coach, let's look at this week. Um, you go into Woodland. Right. Uh, folks, if you've never been to Woodland, I'm going to tell you something about it. You're going to be impressed. I, I know I am every time. The first time I was shocked because – and tell me if this story is correct or not, Coach. They've got a stadium yeah. that was delivered to them by accident, from what I understand. Yeah, it's supposed to go down to Charleston. And uh, the, yeah. the, the people that uh, do the stadiums uh, thought that was the school that they wanted at because it was a new school. But it was actually, it was actually supposed to go to Charleston. So they'd already st- started st- setting it up. They already setting it up, and they said, look, we're not tearing it down. Y'all just got a bigger stadium for it, whatever price y'all was getting for it. That's unreal. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a it's a big stadium. But, you know, we 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 great, great field job. manicured. Great I mean, field. it's yes, unreal. They keep yeah, it up. they keep it up. So I think that we're gonna finally, you know, I mean, I think that the kids are gonna be excited about playing there. I mean, it's on the road, but it's gonna be a real good place to play. Oh yeah. Um, the team itself are playing the Woodland Wolverines. Um, they're one and three right now. Right. They've. Uh, Let's see, they've lost to Ashley Ridge, Batesburg, Leesville, and also to Lake Marion, if I'm right. correct. All right. All right, they destroyed Bethune uh, Bowman last week. Mm-hmm. All right, tell the fans what you know about the Wolverines on offense, defense, what should we look for, as you well know. Now, I don't think they may not have ran the spread as much against other teams, but right. I mean, we were talking earlier, and we both feel like they got to come out and spread this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. they, they started out offensively uh, the first couple of games they were in what the double wing. Double wing, yeah. They couldn't move the ball at all, and I think against Lake Marion they might have had minus 65 total yards offense they trying did. to run the double wing, and they just realized that you know that's not what they're built on. You know they won the state track championship uh, like the last two years in two way, uh, so they got some athletic guys over there, and they just got to find a way to get them the ball. And I think going to the spread. Helps them out with that, getting those guys out in space and letting them do what they do. Uh, defensively, they run a 3-4. They blitz them all over the place. Uh, you know, they have a decent <coughs> kicker up there. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be a uh, it's gonna be a tough battle for us. You know, even though they're 1-3, and three, you know, they're 1-3. They're still going to come out and play. They use, everybody use Bamberg as a measuring stick. Oh, you yeah. know, everybody wants to come out and say, you know, how do we play against Bamberg determines how we're going to be come down the road, which, you know, it's a great honor, but it's also it puts it's tough. It's on taxing. Us. It's yeah, taxing yeah. on the coach because you know that everybody's going to get excited. Yeah, because you know they really not as you know a lot of times you run into a team that's really not very good, but because they're playing you, they play above and beyond. Uh, you know what what you've seen on film, and that's been our thing is you look on film, you're like, man, they're awful. And then when they get on the field, you're like, God dang, these jokers are playing hard. Say, where they come from? Yeah, who who yeah, is that yeah, kid? They yeah, got a new person out there, but it's so, just you know, it's doing tough special. It's yeah. as coaching staff, but they're, they're going to be ready to play. It's their home. Uh, you know, we've played each other for a couple of years now. Yeah. And, um, they're going to they're come out and be ready to play. I'm excited. I tell you, um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's just because I'm doing radio or whatever, but now with uh, WBSC 102.3 listening to here in Bamberg, um, I don't know if it's just because I started doing this this year with the uh, station, but it seems like the games come quicker and quicker and quicker. Oh, quicker. Yeah, I mean, it does. You know, and when I was coaching, it didn't seem like that. It seemed like, God, like, can we ever get the week, uh, Wednesday? Oh, man, we go through walkthroughs on Thursday. We're in shorts with helmets. We're yeah, happy. It, it seems but, like it's going by fast for us. Oh, you know, good. We don't get a lot of – somebody be like, dang, we need an extra day of practice. But, you know, it comes – it Monday just gets Tuesday quicker and Wednesday, quicker and, then, you know, and quicker. Thursday, yeah. You got walk through trying to get ready for middle school and JV games. So, you know, you really only have three good days to prepare yourselves. And then you got to walk through on Thursday and hopefully you got everything covered. All right, Coach, let's go ahead and thank some of our sponsors again Vaughn Electronics, Steve Chandler at Channel Law Firm, South State Bank, Southern Carolina Alliance, Sweets uh, Discount Tire and Complete Auto Repair, Nancy Foster at Foster and Company. Bo Griffin and Home Griffith at Home Federal Savings and Loan, Ness and Jet LLC. Uh, we got Eddie Sanders over at Hires Drugs, Wilson and Luganville Law Firm, Tagadoo's Unique Gifts, Keep Bamberg County Beautiful, Richard Ness Farm Bureau, Bamberg Board of Public Works, Dr. McElhaney at the Bamberg Family Practice, Rick Pinson over at Pinson Insurance Agency. 
Tony Bledsoe right here at Fry's Drive-In. Let me tell you, folks, if you hadn't had something good to eat, come on down here. He's got great food, and uh, I'm assuming it, and everybody wants to eat here. I know that. we got a crowd out there. Advertiser Herald Newspaper, Chris Jennings, Little Howie's Big Chick, Steve Chandler at Chandler Law Firm, and Vaughn Electronics again. Coach, let me tell you something. Hand me those down the way there. We're going to get to Players of the Week this week. And you heard me right, folks and fans at home, Players of the Week. Um, we've got two this week, Coach, and, I, and we felt like both were deservingly so. And let's give some stats. First, we have Keyshawn Orr. Now, Keyshawn Orr this week went out in about 13 carries, 118 yards, and one touchdown. Tell us a little bit about Keyshawn and how he's doing for you this year. Uh, Keyshawn's coming around. You know, Keyshawn started a little slow uh, the first couple of games, but I think he's picked it up here in the, uh, uh, against Baltimore the other night. You know, we, we've got a... a bunch of uh, running backs back there, and I thought he played a heck of a game here Friday night. And our next player of the week, we, uh, like I say, chose two from offense this week, and I, I could look out there. I think uh, Coach Carl's be is thinking now, come on now, it's time for my defensive <laughs> boys to get one of them things, and it's coming. But uh, this week we have a wide receiver, Garris Swarting. Friday night, Garris had four catches for 104 yards. Yeah. And uh, pretty impressive. Let's give him uh, for the season. Garris thus far has eight catches, 168 yards, two touchdowns. Doesn't drop many. Always when you throw it to him, he's there ready to go. And he's got some quick feet. i tell you uh, what. He's been uh, – he's probably been the most consistent. Uh, you know, Garris don't get a lot of the, the publicity, but Garris is always there right where he needs to be at. He does a great job of running his routes. He does a great job of blocking. we got to find a way to get him the ball a little bit more, a little quicker than we do. Uh, you know, because he, he can be explosive now. He can, you get him into a rhythm, he can, he can go get it. And uh, we've got to do a better job of trying to get him involved in the offense a little bit a little bit uh, early in the, in the game uh, because he can open some things up for us. And Keyshawn, if you're wondering at home, Keyshawn Orr on the season has 29 attempts, 171 yards, two touchdowns, and one fumble. So very deserving for him as well. And, oh, yes. and if you hadn't heard at home, folks, we give an award each and every week. It's called Player of the uh, Game, I believe it is. Yes. WBSC Radio Player of the Game. Player of the Game. And we, um, we will uh, give that out each week. But also, the end of the year, we're going to give out a player of the year. Okay. And it's going to be a nice trophy, nice this and that and the other. So, I mean, the guys I, I heard of the other day that they're working extra hard. Oh, yeah. They, wanting to win it. So, I said, hey, I like that. If they want to win an award, I said, if they make them play better and, and play harder, look here, we're glad to be a part oh, yeah. of it. Coach, also, don't forget, we had a bunch of questions this week. I think three or four, which is a bunch for us. You know, it's been kind of slow, folks at home. Don't forget, if you would like to ask Coach um, – Crosby here a question. All you have to do is go to our page, which is WBSC Radio Bamberg. Search for it on um, Facebook, and you can ask a question right on the page, or you can send it to us a private message if you're embarrassed or whatever it may be. But um, we'd love you to ask as many questions you want. If this show lasted two hours, we wouldn't even be mad about it. Coach would be having a good time. They'd be practicing on their own, and I'm sure he'd be happy with me. Not. <laughs> But here we go, Coach. we got a few of them. Let's see what we got here. Uh, the, the players of the week. Uh, we're going to questions from Facebook. All right. Tony Ott from Lexington, South Carolina asks, Coach, how do you determine what plays to call? Do you determine it before the game, as the game's happening? How do you do it? Uh, so we, we come out, uh, Tony, we do a, a script. We use a script probably about our first five to ten plays. And those are plays that we're just going to run no matter what, uh, different formations. Uh, different plays. Well, it may be the same play, but it's different formation. Just to see how people line up to us, uh, and then as the game goes, we just get into a rhythm up top. You know, Coach Green does a great job of calling the plays down from up top, saying this is where you're at, this is what we need to run. Uh, all, all we do is we got we, we got all the plays on a play card. We just call them off and and we just go with it. You know, whatever you give us, that's what we're gonna take. We're not gonna we we, we try to make you be where we want you to be at, and more so than trying to see where you at. That's the reason why we go up tempo is we try to get you into a situation where you got to stay there. You can't make adjustments. Alexis Rhodes from Bamberg, South Carolina, asks, do you hold the score down, Coach, or do you try to get all you can and run it up? <laughs> I try to hold it. <laughs> I, know I try did. to get all I can, but also we try to give our young kids a chance to get in and play, and, and if they get a chance to score, then I, I, I love to see that. Now, we're not going to sit back on the ball when they're in the game. We're still going to be aggressive. We're still going to run the ball. We'll try to throw it in there with our young guys at quarterback. But um, we're not trying to embarrass anybody. But when it comes down to it, it's all about, you know, at the end of the day, we got to win. But in the same process, 
Uh, you never know when you may be on the other side of the, uh, the field and somebody's trying to run the score up on you and your kids looking like we just, we're not very good right now. They're beating us and why they're still trying to score. So we, we, we're, we're respectful about what we do because we are Bamberg and I think that that's what separates us from a lot of people. I agree with you, Coach. Just again, folks, you're listening to the Coach's Corner here at Fry's Drive-In, and we thank Tony Bledsoe and all the folks out here. Uh, it's now open on Monday and Thursday nights from 5 to 7 for a pickup dinner. More information is available. Give Tony a call at 803-245-4540 from 11 to 2, or you can call him at 803-707-3198 anytime. That's Fry's Drive-In Restaurant. A Bamberg tradition under the red roof on Highway 301 North here in Bamberg. A couple more questions for you real quick, Coach. Uh, Bobby Leslie from Tampa, Florida says, you've had a lot of players going to play at Clemson University. Do you get recruiters from Florida and Florida State that come down uh, to look at those same kids sometimes? Uh, yeah, you know, Florida, Florida State, uh, they've been in here since uh, even when we had those guys going to Clemson and um, uh, they, they recruit every year. They come in and do a great job of recruiting our guys. Uh, you know, I just think sometimes, you know, our guys kind of stay close to their home for some reason. Uh, but we've had them go away, and I think we're going to have some come out now that's going to really, you know, uh, get out of the state. You know, we try to keep them in state as much as possible. Uh, but I think we got a group that's coming through there and not going to be able to hold them in the state of South Carolina. I'll tell you what, Coach, it's very impressive, and I've said it, I think, week two, week one. It's impressive the amount of children, kids that we get looked at from uh, big-time programs. I mean, being a Class 1A program uh, here in Bamberg, South Carolina, small town, a small community, small county. But um, we produce some great football players, and it's exciting as a fan and as a, a father. I got a 12-year-old, like you well know, and I got a, a 5-year-old that can keep coming through a good program like that, and hopefully, if that's what they want to do, you know, can advance. And, and I love how that we, we prepare them to get to that next level. All right. Uh, last question for today, Coach, comes from James Banfield here in Bamberg, South Carolina. And I'd like to tell Mr. James, hey, I know him personally. Uh, his question is for the coach. Hey, this is James Banfield, and I'm kind of stuck here at home. And, James, I'm going to tell that. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I'm going to say it. James is a Vietnam veteran. James uh, has some issues at home with his legs and things of that nature. He's a great friend of mine, and I love him to death. Uh, but he's got, he says, and I, we salute you, James, for, you know, all your service to oh, our definitely. country. Thank you for yeah. what you do for this country. Yes, sir. But I got the chance to watch one of the games of uh, BE on our YouTube, on the radio station's YouTube. He said they played pretty good, but there was one player he'd like to keep track of. He said, I can't remember his name, but he played in the defensive backfield and was like a ghost going through the line to get the quarterback. He got a couple of sacks in that game, so I'm assuming, I'm thinking that may have been against Eddie Stowe. If you can remember it, Coach Crosby sitting out in the audience or the coach here, he says, I mean, he acted like uh, he had an internal radar targeted on the quarterback and was on him most of the time. Who is that player? I know he's causing some concern with the offense. Thank you, JB. I mean, I was thinking maybe um, Hallman. Was it Hallman? Oh, what's that kid's name? Uh, no, I think it's uh, number, number eight, Demari. Gajum or Damari. It's either Jamari Dunbar or either Dejon Bamber. Dejon, that's what I was trying to say. I was thinking maybe it was Dejon because I think he had two sacks, maybe one sack against um, oh, Eddie Stowe. Oh, he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, this coming back. It was um, uh, Kenneth McMillan, number eight. Number Kenneth eight, McMillan. Kenneth McMillan. That's yeah, exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Anthony's trying to tell us we're looking everywhere but at him. Yeah. He's over there smiling now. Kenneth McMillan, he's a, he's a heck of a play for, player for us. Uh, he, he actually doesn't play in the defense secondary. Uh, he's actually a defensive end slash outside linebacker type guy. And you walk him out, and yeah. And we can walk him out at times. We can put his hand down the ground. Um, so he does he does quite a few things for us. And, yeah, he did have an excellent game. Uh, last week I thought he played well. Once we kind of moved him and put him into a situation where he could be successful, I thought he had a good game once once he got settled in there against Bowman last week also. Coach, you're 3-0 and going into week four. Had a bye week, right? Right. All right. The uh, – have you had any coaches from other colleges at this point in the season talking to you about any of our players that we might would like to know about, any fans or anything, uh, or anything you could say? Uh, we've had uh, Clemson, Carolina has already been down. Um, we've got North Carolina A&T coming down. Duke's been down. Awesome. Um, so we've got quite a few schools coming in. We try to cut the recruiting down, not <clears> – <throat> not cut it down, but we try to limit our guys to doing a lot of the stuff with this recruiting during the season because we want them to focus more on Bamberg. Uh, you know, a lot of times they get caught up in the coaches coming through, coaches talking to them or trying, you know, just want to see coaches come in. Uh, we just try to keep that down to a minimum so our guys can stay focused 
uh, we talk to them as coaches, and then we'll relay the message to the guys. So and so asked about you, uh, but that's about it when we doing this time of year. All right, coach. Another great show. Um, it's always been fun. It's extra fun after a win. Let's get, get another one tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. Any last word for the fans as they get ready to uh, move forward and come to tomorrow night's game? Oh no, just thank you for the support on last week. Uh, let's continue that this week going down the world. And, um, it's going to be a great game. Great atmosphere. It's cooling off a little bit. It's supposed to be a little chilly tomorrow night. Yep. Uh, so we'll see how guys respond to that. Uh, also, if you don't have anything to do, let me say this because we don't get a chance to. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, we got middle school starting at 5.30 oh, today, you. and then we also have junior varsity starting right behind them. Uh, both of those teams are playing at uh, These young guys would love to see you come out and support them. Uh, it's being played right there at Leon Maxwell Stadium starting at 5.30 today. I'm very excited, Coach, to see that. Um, like I say, a little kid, I mean, I've said it a long time, but on Tuesdays you get to see the uh, rec programs around yeah. Bamberg. Tonight you get to see a middle school team. You get to see a uh, JV team. Both of those got good players on it. And, and it only gives you a brighter future for looking at varsity in the years to come. And if you like to say nothing you have to do tonight or whatever, come on out and watch us. And that's the same thing for tomorrow. Don't forget, fans, just because we got radio here on WBFC 102.3, your hometown sports station, we still would like you to come out to the games. And I know a lot of stations say, wait a minute, we wouldn't do that. But, no, I mean, our main purpose it's for grandparents or somebody that's unable to travel that far, may not have a car, whatever whatever the situation may be. Um, we, we, we'd rather them be at the stadium cheering on the kids because they do work hard each and every week for us. I see them out there in practice, and uh, it's just very impressive. Don't forget, again, tell the fans, coach, that they can listen to us if they determine to stay home here on uh, WBSC 102.3. That's the radio. You can also search for us at www.wbsc.org. And you can stream us um, by clicking on the streaming link on there. You can also go and uh, on your phone, on the apps, go to WBSC Radio. You'll see the little icon pop up. It'll be an antenna with lightning bolts around it. Download that app, and you can listen to us right on your smartphone. Also, YouTube. Go to YouTube.com and search us WBSC Radio. Type in WBSC Radio. You got it with a little glass up top. And then once you see a picture of me come up, that's normally how they do it. I know it's from a phone or something, but it may be different on a laptop computer. But uh, type on the WBSC where you can see the logo in the middle, and it'll pop up. You'll see all the videos from this year. We've got all three games up right now. We've got all the coaches show up next Thursday now. This is some exciting, Coach. Next Thursday, we're going to have the coaches show here at – or we're going to start on Wednesday. Excuse me. Next week's homecoming, right, Coach? Yes. All right. We're starting on Wednesday. You'll see us out, myself, along with uh, – Anthony Harley, and probably as well as uh, Perry Fleming, who's doing our filming for us now. You'll see us out on the parade route. We're going to actually film the parade, put it on YouTube. But before we put it on YouTube, we're going to go out to the stadium. I think we've got a pet rally scheduled for that yes, night. We we'll have that filmed as well on YouTube. And then Friday, we'll have the game on, on uh, at the homecoming activities and things of that nature. So it's going to be a very fun, exciting week. Not so much for coaches. I know back when I coached homecoming, it almost gave me a heart attack because you're Kids get focused on dressing up and doing this and doing the other, and, and, and it's very nerve-wracking as a coach, I'd it say. Is, it is, but, but we'll talk about that it's next. It's fun, though. Oh, yeah, it's, it's fun, fun. And, we, and we love it. And you want yeah. a school spirit, and that's one thing, like you've said before and always, is that it's a special thing about Manberg is everybody gets involved. Everybody. Homecoming parade at most towns right now would probably consist of maybe eight people. Right. Ours consists of the entire county. I mean, it's unreal. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's packed on the side all the way around, all a two-mile, whatever it is, three-mile route, so it's pretty impressive. No, again, we'd like to say thank you to Fry's Drive-In for having us out tonight. Tony Bledsoe and the gang who uh, serve us lunch each uh, Thursday, you are welcome to come out. We start at 1 o'clock. Come a little 12.45, 12.30 if you got lunch and come on out. I mean, you know, if your lunch hour is like that, come out, meet with us, talk with Coach, and about 1.30 we come on the air. Again, Coach, we thank you very much. We're going to send it back to Mr. Bob. Another great show. We can't wait for tomorrow night. Make sure you join us. Back to you, Mr. Bob, at the studio. Kiner and Anthony Harley, along with head football coach of the Bamber Gerhard Red Raiders, Butch Crosby. Join us each Thursday at this same time for this live broadcast from Fry's Restaurant, Highway 301 North in Bamberg.